Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. 
Um, and then you need to be able to kind of view those changes and then ultimately deploy that code somewhere um, so that people can consume it. Um, so that's kind of you know some of the main challenges uh, when you're going from coding on your own to kind of creating an application, working with the team and, and sharing it with the world. So when it's just you, you know, working on a, on a project, you can store the source code on your computer, you can compile and run the code locally. Um, it's, you know, easy to kind of debug and see what the issues are um, when there are errors in your code, um, you know, and, and so, um, you know, that's kind of like this individual developer workflow. Um, you know, in DevOps, you know, there's kind of like this added layer of complexity where you have, you know, developers that are writing new features, delivering software, um, you know, that software is changing every day. And then you have these operators, um, you know, which is the ops side. Um, and they're, you know, worrying about the stability of the service, the security of the service, and the reliability of the service. So you can think about, you know, these kind of two pieces. And traditionally, you know, as you can see by that orange bar in the middle, they've been a bit separate. And so developers would, you know, make these changes to the code base, and then the operators would take these uh, kind of new code base or code base that's reflecting these changes and deploy it somewhere. And then they would be responsible for making sure that the code is, you know, stable and available for the consumption um, by the users. I think, you know, DevOps is kind of turning, you know, I'm sorry. DevOps is kind of turning that um, on its head a little bit where now these teams are kind of starting to, to be more integrated and, and working together to make sure that as the changes are being created by the developers, um, that they're able to you know, be tested and, and verified and then you know, ultimately pushed into production. And so when you think about you know, kind of how this evolution um, looks, it's almost a little bit like going from you know, kind of Microsoft Word to Google Docs. So in, in Word you have you know, this kind of one person's making the changes. Maybe you have multiple versions. So you have, you know, John's code dot final, John's code dot final dash version one, John's code, you know, dash version two, John's code dash version two final. Um, I'm sure some of you who've been in, you know, universities and things remember those days. Uh, but this creates conflicts. The versions, you know, quickly become out of date. It's hard to collect feedback. Um, you know, where Google Docs, you know, kind of really unlocked a lot of this. Um, and it allows people to edit the same document at the same time, you know, GitLab, we use Google Docs in all of our meetings and people can, you know, um, all contribute kind of notes, add their questions into the docs and it makes for um, a really efficient kind of uh, meeting and also a really efficient editing process. Um, there's a single version of the document, so there's no confusion around what the latest version is. Um, there's no conflicts, the conflicts are resolved, you know, um, immediately and kind of in the platform. Uh, folks can leave comments and um, add tasks and, and it becomes a really collaborative kind of space. Um, and so, you know, the idea for DevOps is really to kind of move uh, code collaboration from like this word kind of, you know, isolated um, complex experience into a more synchronous collaborative experience like Google Docs. Um, and what that looks like in practice you know, is kind of like this, you know, developer workflow that you see here. So it starts, you know, with an issue. And so an issue really just isn't um, essentially like it, it, you could consider it a unit of work and it has all the details around, you know, what you'll be building. So if you're creating a feature, um, you know, you'll detail all the changes that you want to see in that feature, the design elements, um, you know, that are required, um, the, you know, front end elements that are required, the back end elements that are required. Um, and that way everybody can kind of agree um, what that deliverable, what that unit of work looks like. Once you define the issue, uh, then you'll start creating a merge request. For folks that use GitHub, this is called a pulled request on Git, GitHub, but in GitLab they're called merge requests. And this is essentially creating changes to the code base. And you can see that right now, when you're creating this merge request, you're branching off from the master or soon to be called main branch on many projects. Um, and this is where you'll make your changes. And so the changes come in these, you know, forms of commits and commits can be, you know, changes to code, changes to documentation, changes to design. Um, 
And when you commit those code, uh, those changes to your code base, you know, that'll trigger in GitLab a, a CI pipeline. And the CI pipeline will run and deploy that code in an environment, and run tests on it just to make sure that it's working properly. And this is all happening on this feature branch. Um, the next step in GitLab would be for the, the pipeline to spin up a review app. And the review app is essentially, you know, a um, application that shows what these changes look like in production without pushing them to your kind of production branch or your main branch. Um, after those changes are available for folks to review, you can have uh, this kind of peer review and discussion code reviews um, on, on the merge request. You can do that through comments or suggestions. Um, and then once those changes are approved, you, the, the merge the uh, merge request gets merged back into this main branch. The issue closes and this pipeline runs to deploy it to the cloud. And then GitLab also has monitoring features. So that's really this kind of workflow, the developer workflow now that you're, when you're making changes. And this is really getting you closer to that seamless kind of Google Docs like experience where um, things are collaborative. There's a single kind of source of truth for folks to um, to work on. And, and there's the, the branching kind of mechanism that, that's available through Git um, helps people avoid um, conflicts because you'll be making different changes on different branches and as those changes get merged back into the main branch, um, you know all of the changes are verified. And then, if there are, are any conflicts, you can resolve those, um, you know, in your local environment or in your in your uh, web editor if you're using GitLab. Just want to go and check if there's see some comments, but no questions yet. Okay, so we'll keep moving along. So when you think about DevOps, you know, we kind of just described that developer workflow, but this is really like a, a kind of an ongoing cycle, um, you know, within DevOps. So plan would be that first kind of step, um, thinking through issues and kind of, you know, designing or outlining what you want to build. Um, the create stage are the merge requests and the commits. That's the actual kind of changes that you're making um, to the code. Then you're kind of verifying that and testing it um, in in the verify stage or you know the CI kind of process, um, packaging up and, and releasing that uh, through continuous kind of delivery, um, and then you're configuring and monitoring it. So making sure that it's you know being deployed to the right environments, and then once it's deployed, um, is remaining stable. So. Right now, there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of build this DevOps flow that touches all of those stages. Um, there are a ton of DevOps tools, lots of steps, you know, to deploy your applications to the cloud. Um, and I think there's, you know, many development shops come up with different, uh, or development teams come up with different kind of um, paths to get their their code from idea to production. But ultimately. You know, those processes can come become complex very quickly when you're using a whole different set of tools uh, that's unique to your organization, and sometimes maybe even unique to your team um, within an organization. If you choose to use a different, say, CI tool um, than your than your peers in a different part of your organization, so all of these different tools, the different data models, they create you know confusion. They create some engineering overhead because they often require customization in order to work. Um, and, you know, it just creates, you know, some kind of complexity, some compliance risk. Um, and it also, you know, maybe even makes it difficult to switch from one team to another. Um, if, if you're, say, you know, on a team at your company that's using, you know, GitLab, and then you switch to, you know, using GitHub Actions or something like that, then there's a learning curve that gets involved and it kind of creates um, some friction even moving between teams. So, um, we don't think that this is really an ideal kind of solution, which is where GitLab fits in really nicely as a single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle. So GitLab, you know, is the most popular DevOps solution for businesses. We have more than 100,000 organizations that use our software. We're an open core company, so we have an open source uh, version that's available for everyone to use for free. Um, I would love for folks to try it out during Hack This Fall. Um, and host your project on uh, GitLab.com. 
we have 3,000 code contributors, more than 10,000 uh, folks in our community who are contributing um, pretty regularly, either you know whether that's code or or kind of um, you know attending meetups or doing other kind of activities, uh, reaching out to me to do speaking at their events, like Terthak did. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so we have a really active community, you know, lots of users, and um, you know the country, the company itself has been growing really fast. Um, so it's it's been a great kind of place to be over the last few years. Um, as you can see, we have great adoption across different industries. Um, so we're really not, you know, kind of a great solution for just one industry or just one type of business. I think you know lots of organizations find. Uh, value in our application. So this is just an overview of all of the kind of stages that we talked about earlier and, and the different features that are available in those stages and also just a, a little glimpse at our roadmap as well. Uh, if you look at the bottom and some of the coming soon features that we'll be rolling out. Um, and yeah, this is an, an overview of our kind of application if you're not familiar with GitLab and you can see, you know, in some ways that this you know, sidebar on the left represents a lot of those different stages. So the repository is your source code. That's where you'll store your, um, you know, your files and your directories will be. Issues is where you can track um, the work that you're, you, know, you have planned. Their merge request is kind of the work in progress and all of those kind of open changes that you're working on. Um, then you'll see your pipelines, the security and compliance features that are available to you. Um, the ops features, packages, and registries, analytics, where you'll do your kind of, um, this is like a bit of monitoring, monitoring, but also you can see like your velocity and burn down charts and things like that there. Um, snippets are, are your code um, similar to GIS. One other thing I like to talk about when I'm talking about GitLab is our values. Um, at GitLab, we have six values. They spell out an acronym called credit. Um, and, and there's something we're really proud of. And they're also something that's like one of our most attractive re recruiting tools when people join our community. Um, I think people that join our community tend to be most excited about our transparency value. Our transparency value um, is pretty unique in that we share um, everything publicly by default. So you can see our strategy, our roadmap, what our OKRs are, our company handbook that shows how we manage all of our um, you know, business operations, our issue trackers, so you can see all the things that we're working on and give a thumbs up or leave a comment on features that you want to see us develop. And you can even go on YouTube. Uh, if you go to youtube.com slash GitLab Unfiltered and watch our team meetings and see how our team interacts with each other. And one cool thing is that if you watch a couple of these meetings, you'll absolutely hear people talking about our values when they're making tough decisions. Um, we really do live these values. And um, I think they're what allows to be successful and also a great recruiting tool for folks to, to, to attract folks to our community. So if you're looking to get involved with GitLab, um, there's a number of ways to kind of get started. As I mentioned, you can sign up for GitLab and start using it for this hackathon. We also have a global um, network of meetups. We have uh, meetups in over 50 countries. So um, I didn't see too many people share their location. Um, but we do have groups in India, um, Siddharth. So I would encourage you to check out um, our meetups um, and see if there's any in your area. And also, um, you know, code contrib contributions are a great way to get started. Um, I assume, you know, that there's probably a lot of folks on this uh, stream and participating in this hackathon that are interested in improving their kind of programming skills and contributing to open source is a great way to do that. You'll get valuable feedback during the code review process that you can use to level up your skill set. And it also um, is a great way to kind of show folks the work that you've been doing and that you're, you know, um, you know have the kind of skills and experience contributing to uh, large organizations that can be helpful when you're out, you know, looking for a job or, or looking to change jobs. So um, that's everything that I had prepared for today. Uh, I wanted to leave some time for questions at the end. I see we have uh, one question from Ashish. Um, I don't know. Do you want to verbalize that? Yeah, yeah. So are the Agile and DevOps the same? And uh, Let me just stop sharing my screen. Yeah, for the live, it has already been stopped. No worries at all.
Oh, perfect. Uh, so yeah, so agile and DevOps are, are not the same. Um, I think that there's similarities in kind of the goals that people are trying to achieve with agile and DevOps and that both are kind of pushing teams to be more efficient in how they work. Um, and I think that there's another similarity in that to be successful with agile or DevOps, um, it requires kind of a cultural change within an organization um, to make those changes um, something that people embrace and adopt and, and really unlock the value of agile and DevOps. But I think that there's kind of two different, um, two major differences. One is that, you know, the agile methodology is really um, focused on like, what are you working on and how do you plan that type of work? And that could be applied to anything from say, you know, making cars or, you know, how you run a production kind of plant to how you, to a software delivery. Um, whereas DevOps is really kind of narrowly focused on um, software delivery. So I think that's one difference is just the scope of how applicable they are. Like you can't do DevOps on a uh, manufacturing floor, but I think you can do agile um, when you're thinking about how you do work on a, on a, on a manufacturing floor. Um, and I think the other big difference, you know, is that, um, you know, agile is really something that, you know, is kind of more of like a top down where you have, you know, often have like, say a, a scrum leader or project master or a project uh, manager who's, um, you know, kind of like responsible for a lot of the work. And I think DevOps is, you know, like this cultural shift where um, everyone is kind of, you know, responsible for changing how they work to, to make sure that DevOps is working for their team. Oh, fantastic. So we have another one from Abhishek. Uh, what are the benefits of automation testing? Yeah, to be honest, you know, um, you know, when you're thinking about automation testing in the context of like um, CI, obviously, you know, like the more you can automate your testing, the faster you can deliver software. And then, you know, from a security perspective, uh, the easier it is for people to kind of test their security vulnerabilities, uh, the more likely they are to do that. Uh, and so I think that anything you can do to make the software you know, easier to do, to test and and easier to secure is um, you know going to be a good a, a, a strong benefit. And so that I would say those are some of the benefits um, of automation testing. Amazing! Uh, it was really an amazing, great presentation. So um, I have something in my mind, and like you know, uh, being the Tom Cruise at uh, GitLab. <laughs> Would you like to give any important tips about either contributing towards open source or something that might help the participants of this hackathon? So um, I think, you know, my advice around contributing to open source would be like, don't discount your own abilities. Um, I think typically when people think about contributing to open source, they think about making you know, code contributions, maybe building out some kind of really complex feature that adds a ton of value to the software. But there's so many other ways you can contribute. At GitLab, we have um, our meetups program that doesn't require any technical skill um, to get involved. You can, as long as you have a passion for kind of GitLab and a passion for helping others, I think you'll be well positioned um, to be successful as a meetup organizer. Um, you can contribute by you know, going on our forum and answering questions that other community members are asking. You can contribute by writing blog posts. So even if it's, you know, just how you use GitLab for um, this hackathon, if you wrote a blog post about that, that's adding a ton of value to our community. So there's so many different ways you can contribute. And a lot of other communities have like special interest groups. So you could help with how they market the project or the diversity of the project. Um, so there's there really are many different ways to contribute to open source beyond just contributing code. Um, so I would encourage you to find, you know, kind of the community that has values that align with yours um, and find the t contribution types that, you know, both you have the ability to contribute and also an interest and in, are excited about and then go and pursue those. So if you're passionate about diversity and inclusion, and you know you love the Kubernetes project. You know maybe you want to join their you know diversity special interest group, um, or if you're you know aligned with GitLab's transparency value, 
um, and really you know, interested in technical writing, maybe you wanna start reviewing our docs and contributing changes to the docs either by you know, adding links to YouTube videos that add further detail on documentation or even correcting typos um, you know, can, can add a lot of value. So um, I would say you know, that's, that's my recommendation for folks looking to get started in open source. Like you can, it's okay to start small. Right, amazingly answered. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the great session and the interaction was also amazing. So one folk has returned that uh, the session was amazing. It was really good and I registered in, in GitLab right now. Amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I'm excited about that. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll see you contributing or speaking at a meetup or something else cool. And um, yeah, I just wanted to wish everyone luck with the rest of the hackathon, both the organizers and the participants. I hope you all have a great uh, week and a great weekend. And I'm excited to see the uh, outcomes uh, later this week and, and over the weekend. Surely. Uh, we will keep you updated about this same. And it was amazing. Uh, you know, uh, we are very glad that you came and we are happy that we, you know, uh, got the opportunity to host you. Thank you very much for joining in today. Okay. Take care. So, uh, fill the feedback form shared in the chat section, and it will also be used to assign the certificate for this session. It will be open only for 15 minutes and won't be reopened again. So don't forget to fill that out. Thanks a lot, everyone who joined us today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can get the updates of all the workshops coming up ahead. Stay tuned. Hope to see you in the next session. Stay safe and take care.